Hello, hello, look at me actually uploading YouTube videos. Welcome back. My name is Louise, if you're new around here, and today I wanted to talk about how to read more books. 2022 was absolutely the year that I fell back in love with reading. I managed to read 112 books in 2022, which is absolutely wild. Um, the year before I read 44 books, and at the time I thought that that was impressive, but then I obviously completely knocked that out of the park in 2022. And people are often shocked when I tell them that I managed to read 112 books last year. And I know for booktube that might be like a normal number, but in the real world, that's a lot of books. But it actually wasn't that difficult. And there definitely were some reasons why I was able to read that many books in one year. So I wanted to make this video sharing with you how I did that and the habits and tips that help me to read so many books. So without further ado, my first tip, if you want to read more books, is to have a mental breakdown. I had a bit of a mental breakdown at the start of 2022, and I coped with it by reading books and escaping into literature. And so if you ask me, you know, what's one of the biggest reasons you've read so many books in 2022, it's because I had a mental breakdown. So if you're looking to read more books, I would highly recommend, you know, making your life really stressful, having a complete breakdown, and then escaping for your problems by reading books and ignoring all the problems in your life. <laughs> Obviously, this is a joke. I'm not recommending that you go out and make your life stressful just so that you can read more books. But I wanted to talk about this in this video because it really is one of the reasons why I read so many books is because I was using literature as escapism. And I wanted to say that to remind you that reading books is not the be all and end all in life. Um, I actually found that later in the year when I was doing better, I was reading less books because I was doing other things. I had other hobbies. I was spending more time with friends. I was working. And so I wasn't making as much time for reading books. And that is absolutely okay. You do not need to read over a hundred books a year to be a good person. And if there are other things that you would rather be doing with your time, please, do those things and I felt it was important to start this video by talking about that because I can imagine people clicking on this video because they feel like oh I'm not reading enough I need to read more I want to be the kind of person who reads but I just want to start this video by reminding you that if you don't love reading you don't need to find other hobbies that fulfill you life is short you know spend it doing what you want to do and not what you feel like you ought to be doing and that leads us perfectly onto my first real tip which is to read the books that you want to read <laughs> If you just want to read light-hearted romances or thriller mysteries or YA love triangle fantasy books, please do that. Like I say, if you're reading because you want to read more and you want to fall back in love with reading, the best thing you can do is to read the books that you actually enjoy and that you actually want to read. Like I say, it's important to remember why you're doing this. You know, if you're just doing this because you want to have fun, then read those books. You don't need to read classics or really difficult contemporary literary fiction. And surprise, surprise, if you're actually enjoying the reading that you're doing, it'll be far easier to keep reading and to read more books. Tip number three is to start more books. In order to discover what you love reading and to fall back in love with reading and to become a book addict, you're gonna need to discover what kind of books you love reading. And especially if it's been a long time since you really got into reading, you might not know what your tastes are or your tastes might have changed since you were reading as a child. And so I've found that starting a lot of books and really picking up anything that sparks my interest, even if it's outside of my comfort zone or outside of genres that I normally read, has really helped me to broaden my horizons and help me figure out what kind of books it is that I really enjoy reading. And this is also a really good opportunity for me to remind you to use and support your local libraries. Libraries are a great place to get books for free. And like I say, if you're trying to start a lot of books and start books that are outside of your comfort zone, a library is a great way to do this because you don't have that risk factor involved. Um, I know buying books brand new can be expensive and so you're unlikely to buy books that you feel on the fence about but if you can get them from your library for free then that doesn't really matter and you take away that risk element and you can try more books that are outside of your comfort zone and it won't matter if you don't enjoy them or you don't finish them because you haven't spent 
any money off them. And a lot of libraries actually nowadays have digital services that you can use. I use an app that is linked to my library where I can get ebooks and audiobooks for free using my library's licenses, but I can just get them on my device rather than getting physical books out of the library. And so that's an even better way to try books because you don't even have to go to the effort of getting them from your library. You can literally just download the ebook and try a few chapters and see if you enjoy it. And this leads us on to my fourth tip, which is finish fewer books. Like I said, in 2022, I finished 112 books, but I also DNF'd another 30, 40. I am a really big DNF'er of books. If you don't know what it means, it stands for did not finish, which means that, you know, you got halfway through a book and then you gave up on it and you put it down and you decided not to continue reading it. Life is short and there are way more books in existence than I'm ever going to be able to read. And with that in mind, I don't want to waste my time reading books that I'm not enjoying when there are other books that I could really enjoy that I could be reading instead. I think we definitely apply the sunk cost fallacy to books where we feel like we need to finish a book because we've either bought it and spent money on it or because we've invested our time and energy into reading it and we feel like if we don't finish it we will be wasting those things but what actually happens in reality is that if you're not enjoying a book you will avoid reading it and you'll end up reading nothing instead and so instead of putting the book down and picking up a different book that you could really enjoy you'll end up just reading nothing because you'll feel obliged to finish the book that you don't want to finish and so you'll just read nothing instead. Number five is to track your reading. <laughs> Tracking your reading progress can really help to gamify the situation, which can be a controversial thing. Some people say that you shouldn't track your reading because it takes the intrinsic joy out of the reading. But I personally find that gamifying anything can help me to stay motivated and make more progress. Um, I will leave a link to a really great Ali Abdal video about gamifying your life. Um, and I definitely apply that to reading. And I find that helping to track my reading and seeing that number of books that I've read slowly going up really helps me to you know, feel like it's a game and it's fun and it motivates me to keep reading more books. The easiest way to do this is by using an app such as Goodreads or Storygraph, which already set up to track books for you and it's really easy to log the books that you're reading. But if you don't wanna use those apps, you can obviously use an Excel spreadsheet or just a pencil and paper to keep track of how many books that you're reading. I would also really recommend tracking your reviews of the books that you're reading. The easiest way to do this is again, to use an app like Goodreads or Storygraph and to give the book a rating. Most of these apps use a one star to five star system. Um, and by tracking a book, giving it like three stars or four stars or five stars, etc., helps you to see what kind of books you're enjoying. And again, this will help you to better improve your reading tastes and figure out what kind of books you're gonna enjoy in the future. So as well as tracking the number of books that you're reading, I think it's really important to track your rating of these books because then you can see what kind of books you're enjoying and you can help learn what your reading taste is. I personally also find that tracking my reading really helps me to remember what it is that I've read throughout the year because at the end of the year I can look back and I can see those 112 books that I've read this year whereas without that without having this written down list I might forget what half of those books are. Um, obviously some of them are so memorable that they stick with me easily but a lot of them aren't quite so memorable and I would forget about them if I wasn't reminded oh yeah I read that here's what I thought of that um, and so I actually think that tracking my reading tracking my rating and sometimes I write like a few sentences just as a quick review really helps me to remember what I'm reading and therefore I think that helps me to get more out of the books that I'm reading. My sixth tip is to make a TBR, also known as a to be read list, which is basically just a list of all of the books that you want to read. This is helpful if you want to read more books because it means you have a list of books that you're excited about and that you want to read and it will motivate you to a keep reading, finish the books that you're reading so that you can get onto even more books that you know you want to read and it means that when you do finish a book and you put it down it's easy to pick up another book quickly because you already have a list of books that you want to read whereas if you finish one book and you don't know what you want to read next you might find yourself not picking up another book for a few weeks whereas if you have a list of all the books that you want to read it's really easy to just go from one book to another. Tip number seven is to use different book formats. <laughs> This is definitely one of the big things that changed my reading habits in 2022. A lot of these other tips I was doing already, but this tip I really embraced this year and it really helped me to read so many books. So by that, I mean reading physical books, reading eBooks and reading audiobooks. I'm reading all of them. I know some people have like a preference and I think I would say my preference leans towards audiobooks in the moment. I found that a lot of the books that I read were audiobooks, but 
I've found that the magical key is to use all three of them. The biggest reason that this has really helped me to read more books is because I use the different formats in different situations. I love curling up with a physical book in the evenings. Um, I can see why some people, you know, really romanticise the feel of a physical book and I enjoy that sometimes. And so it's really nice to have physical books so I can really enjoy the full reading experience. But then I find ebooks are really good for when I'm on the go, when I'm on a bus or I'm on a train and I've forgotten a book or I haven't got one with me, I can just whip out my phone and open the Kindle app or I can take my Kindle, I have a physical Kindle, um, which is obviously much smaller to carry when I'm going on holidays, and I can just easily read a few chapters of a book without having to lug a physical book around. Ebooks are also really good for when you're curled up in bed, because it can be really difficult when you're curled up in bed to have a physical book. Um, and I think we've all gotten accustomed to curling up in bed and lying down and having our phone. Um, and instead of scrolling on Twitter, just open your Kindle app and start reading there instead. Really recommend doing that. And then lastly, obviously audiobooks. Like I said, I read so many audiobooks last year and audiobooks are really great because I can listen to them while I'm doing other things. I listen to audiobooks while I'm walking, while I'm doing chores like cooking and cleaning, while I'm exercising. I listen to them all the time because I can listen to them while I'm doing those other things that I have to do anyway. I have also found that sometimes in the evenings I don't have the energy it feels like to open a physical book and to sit and read a physical book. Sometimes I just feel tired and I just want to be a slob on the couch. What I will do is I will do a craft, I'll do some colouring in or some embroidery or I will just play a silly game on my phone like 2i4i or a jigsaw puzzle on my iPad, something like that and I will listen to an audiobook while I'm doing that and for some reason that is way easier and way more relaxing than reading a physical book. And so that has also really helped me to read lots more books this year. I feel like audiobooks used to have a bit of a stigma of like, oh, you're cheating if you're listening to an audiobook because it's not as difficult as reading the physical book or, you know, you haven't like had the full experience. But I feel like that's going away now and people are starting to like accept that like, if you consume the book, it doesn't matter what format you consumed the book in, you know, you consumed it and therefore it counts towards your reading goals for the year. Okay, tip number eight is to read multiple books at once. <laughs> And I have two reasons for doing this. Firstly, it relates to what we were just talking about, which is reading different formats of books. So I will often have a physical book, an ebook, and an audiobook on the go at once, because like I say, they work for different situations. And because these things can be expensive, I will often have three different books on the go. In a perfect world, I would love to own one book and have it in multiple formats. And sometimes if you know the physical book I'm reading, I can get the audiobook or the ebook on my library app, I will do that so that I can have the same book in multiple formats at the same time, but that's not always possible. And say having those multiple formats can be expensive and can feel like a waste of money. So often I will have multiple books on the go just because I'm reading them in different formats. And the second reason that I would recommend doing this is because different types of books can work really well for when you're in different moods. Um, the biggest example for me is that I, I really love to read nonfiction and I will read some really dense nonfiction books, but I don't always want to read these and I'm not always in the mood to read these. And if the only book that I had on the go was a really dense non-fiction book, I would probably find myself doing that thing where I think, oh, I can't be bothered to read that right now. I'm tired and I just wanna relax and I just won't read anything. So for me, it's important to have different types of books on the go at the same time. Like I said, I often have a dense non-fiction book, but then I'll have, you know, a lighthearted romance that I'm also reading at the same time. And by doing that, I always have something that I'm in the middle of that I'm in the mood to read because if I have two or three books on the go, they all suit different moods, then I'm much more likely to be in the mood for one of those. Tip number nine is my only tip that relates to actually how you read. Um, if you Google how to read faster, you'll see lots of tips about speed reading and you know skimming the text and reading vertically, etc. About like physically how you read. Um, and these are helpful for some people, I guess, but I haven't found most of them particularly helpful for me, especially because I'm more talking about how to read fiction and reading fiction is something that you want to enjoy. Um, I can understand that if you're reading for your studies or your work etc it might be helpful to learn tips that help you get through a text faster but if you're trying to read for enjoyment those tips aren't always the best thing because a lot of those tips can encourage you to you know, read as fast as you can and you don't get the most enjoyment out of the book whereas I'm talking more about you know reading fiction and reading for pleasure. But the one tip that I have found that is really helpful is just this idea that you don't have to read every single word on the page. So this applies in two ways. Firstly, if I'm reading a big paragraph and I can tell that the paragraph is repetitive or just not important, um, I will find myself skim reading it or sometimes I will just skip entire paragraphs. If I think I don't care about this, I'll just skip it. 
And you know what? I say that's not cheating. Um, I think we have this fear that, oh, if I'm reading this book and I want to record it on my Goodreads as I've read this book, I can't skip a paragraph. No, let, I say let go of that. Um, I say skip as many paragraphs as you want. One thing I found in particular that I do is that when two characters are talking to each other, I will skip the filler between their speech. I will just read the words that they're actually saying to each other because obviously that wouldn't look very good on a page, but authors will often put in, you know, he said longingly and she said this while looking out of the window, etc., etc. And you just don't need to read those words sometimes. So sometimes I will just read what the character is reading and I'll skip all the filler. Um, and that helps me to read faster and keep up momentum. And this is obviously also a really useful tip when it comes to non-fiction. I saw Mark Manson made a video about how to read more books and he talked about this. And it was one of those things that once he said it, I was like, oh, of course. Um, the idea that if you read a lot of non-fiction like I do, and like me, you end up finding yourself reading multiple books on the same topic, often they will reference the same studies and the same ideas and you don't need to read it if you've already read it and you still remember it from a different book. So if you're reading a book, um, you know, you're reading a book about how to be more productive and you come across a chapter that's talking about a study that you've already heard of and concepts that you've already heard of, just skip that chapter. You already know what's in it, why are you reading it? Yeah, I think it's just letting go of this fear that you have to read every single page in order to be a perfect reader. You absolutely do not. And then number 10, my final tip is to join bookish communities or just follow bookish content online. Because A, this will help you to feel excited about reading. You'll feel like you're in this bubble of people who love reading and it'll make you more excited to pick up more books. And B, it'll help expose you to more books that you might be interested in. You know, if you see someone reviewing a book, you might think, oh, I would really love that. And then you can add it to your TBR list. For me, I do this in two ways. I follow a lot of my in real life friends on Goodreads, which is fun because then I can see what books they're reading and what ratings they give them. And I can message them and say, oh, just saw you've read this book. What did you think of it? Um, do you think it's something I will like? And then B, I follow a lot of bookish content online, um, particularly on YouTube. I love watching bookish YouTube videos like this one. Um, and that is where I get a lot of my passion for reading and also my um, suggestions for books to read from. Okay, so there we have it. Those are my main tips for how to read more books. If you're wondering how I read so many books last year, these are my secrets. Like I say, I want the main takeaway for this video to be that reading should be fun. And especially if you're reading fiction and you want to read for enjoyment, just make sure that you're you know enjoying it and you're reading the books that you actually want to read and you're reading them at the pace and in the format that you want to read them and don't let other people pressure you or tell you that your reading doesn't count because you're listening to audiobooks or you're reading light-hearted romances ignore them read what you want to read read it in the format you want to read and just make sure you're having fun that should be the main takeaway from this video because it turns out when you're having fun you're way more likely to read more okay thank you for watching please don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already my name is louise and hopefully i will see you very soon with another video